Hello and welcome back. This time we are talking about how to develop a good contour loop with the help of the body plot or with the frequency response. Here, this we had uh, the Nyquist plot. We talked about stability there. And there we realized that there is a, a connex between the gain and the reserve, the phase reserve, the amplitude reserve, that if I'm increasing the gain, yeah, then I might run into troubles with stability. Also, in this picture, we have seen this. Yeah. The further I come up with the gain, the more I get into stability issues. But what is the goal to, to reach? Two things. This gain here. This gain here must be as high as possible. Why? Remember the transfer function or the there was always the term something above one plus FO in the bottom. If this is really really high, then there was this FO on one side, this was this uh, transfer function of the of the wanted value, of the reference value, and on the, this is we wanted to have 1, so we said FO must be huge, yeah. and the transfer function for the disturbances was the system transfer function divided by, and also here if this is huge, this is getting small, and this should be 0 we said. Yeah. So a huge FO is good. With a huge FO I usually get a small phase reserve. The phase reserve defines somehow how, I mean, if we have here a step, how far we are over swinging. Yeah. This is in the phase reserve. The smaller the phase reserve is, the higher the overswing. There is a, there is for PT2 things, there is a little bit, uh, uh, you know, of the, the rule of thumb. Uh, this means the overswing in percent plus the phase reserve in degree is around 70. So, if we do have a phase reserve of zero, rough estimation is this a rough estimation, rule of thumb. Yeah? If we have a phase reserve of zero, yeah, then we would get overswing of 70%. This is usually not good. Yeah? If we have a phase reserve of 60, yeah, we should have an overswing of 10%. That's much better. Yeah? So, this is for rough estimation, like I said. So the phase reserve should be at least 60, let's say, 50, 60, yeah, depending on the overswing. Phase reserve and the overswing do have a relation to each other. And the time until the overswing, you know, there is the swinging. Yeah, and this is the frequency of the swinging. Yeah, and this frequency of the swinging, this is a relationship to omega d, the value where we reach 1, yeah? a, a, a gain of 1. This has also a relation. We want to have this as short as possible, so we want to have this as high as possible. However, if this is higher, like for instance in the red line, we are messing up this relationship, so we have to compromise somehow. Basically, what is good is huge amplification ratios and high omega d by at a reasonable at a reasonable uh, phase reserve that's it, it sounds easy huh? or oh, doesn't sound easy this as high as possible 
gain as high as possible. This is easy because it just have to shift. However, phase reserve in a reasonable, reasonable area, eh? 60, 50, 60 percent uh, degree. So let's have a look on a body plot. Then, now make it old school. There is somewhere the system. Yeah? This is a PT1 system. This is fixed. Let's say it looks like this. PT1 yeah? system looks like this. Then I have a controller. This here is the controller, a PI controller. Okay? And I want to combine those two. Okay? With the gain of KP, I could shift it like this. Yeah? With the gain of KI or TI, the, the, the integration time, I can shift it like this. Okay, and so I can select where my band is by applying the parameters accordingly. I can simply put my controller somewhere. And if I want to have the gain as high as possible, then I should bring this up as far as possible. And I will try to do it that way, because then I would end up in a straight line. That's not so easy to show here with my shifties, yeah? with my slides, sliding foils. <laughs> uh, we'll have a look on the computer, okay? we have a look on the computer, on my reference uh, Excel sheet where we can select the sum of two things yeah? and then we see how the phase is reacting. Good thing to know is fixed system parameters. The only thing I can change, I can select where to put the governor or the, the controller. Yeah? This would be nice. So let's have a look on the computer, okay? Okay, so here is the thing on the computer, okay? You know this, you know this? Uh, we have two things, you see. This yellow line is the PT1 line. This is what I shifted, this was the blue line on my old school thing, okay? So this is the PT1 line which is fixed, that's the system. Yeah. You see, this is the total value or the absolute value, and this is the phase. And I want to control this with a PI element, with a PI controller. This is the green line. And now, if I'm changing, for instance, TN, yeah, I can change the position, I can change the pos position of the band. Yeah. And if I'm changing, K, yeah, then I can change the position of, of K. Yeah. I mean, basically that's it. Yeah. What can be done? Yeah. Let's have a look on the total yeah, on FO. We want to have this as high as possible yeah, and with a reasonable alpha air, yeah? the reserve, the phase reserve. So let's also watch the sum. This is how this looks like. Not too bad, I would say. What I can do, yeah? we see the, the sum is doing, I'm using here the same, the same K now too. But we are fitting here together. Yeah? I'm fitting K to, to the system, 
key of the controller to the system. And now I'm vary, varying, 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 ändern, yeah, varying, <laughs> the end, yeah, the integrational part. If I do this, I could use 10 for instance, yeah, then I'm pretty much left. Then I'm losing here, yeah, gain. I want to have this as high as possible. Why should I do this? Why should I do this? So I'm moving to smaller values like 0 0.01, let's say. Then I'm pretty much right. Yeah? However, have a look what happens on the face. Yeah? This, now here I'm fine. I'm high, high, high gain value. But have a look at the face. Oh yeah, I'm dropping. I'm dropping the phase, and the phase reserve, where I hit the, the zero line, is not that high. Yeah? Here we only have, for instance, 150, 155, yeah, 180, 25 degree. Too low. Yeah? So putting it too much right is also not good. Yeah? Uh, Another thing is, if I put them, put it exactly at the position where the time constant of the system is. Look at that, what is happening here. Look at that. It's a straight line. The face is not glimpsing. Not at all. Okay. Perfect. I'm compensating my system with my controller and I have an I element. Yeah? At low frequencies I have huge, huge uh, gain which means slow changes or slow things will be compensated almost perfect. Yeah? That's an I element. Yeah? And the higher frequencies where it can be dangerous, it's never below minus 90. So I have 90 degree phase reserve. Problem with this thing is that BT1 systems usually do not really exist. Usually there are then some higher level uh, time constants which will bring the phase a little bit down at high frequencies. Yeah? But in the theory, it would look like this. In theory, we could even add here gain yeah? and bring this up and we uh, can use 100 yeah? Ooh, and we are high. Yeah? But like I said, in reality there is not really a PT1 system. Yeah? There are always PTN systems and it will mess this up. Yeah? Yeah, basically, this is what we can try. Okay. This is what we can try. We can try to compensate one position of the, of the system with our controller. Okay. With a PI controller I can compensate exactly one. With a BAD controller I can compensate two, three even. Yeah, maybe let's have a short look on, on how it would look like with a PT2 system. Yeah? So I get rid of my PT1 element and I want to have a PT. And let's say it's a pretty nice PT2 element, we have a damping of 2. Or let's even have a damping of 5. Here we are. Yeah. This is how this is looking, looks like now. If I now try to compensate one element, yeah, I would compensate this one. Yeah, that we are going up here. Yeah. You see, right now it's a pretty steep line and we are never where we reach one, we have a really, 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 really tiny 
uh, face reserve. This is not good. So I have to get down with my TN. Uh, let's say five. Okay, looks already better. Uh, but now, ooh, I also have to to get down with my with my gain. Uh, so come down, say to ten. Okay, now I'm here. Yeah, and here I have a phase reserve 120, 60 degree. Uh, looks already pretty promising, I would say. Yeah, 60 degree. This is nice. Maybe a little bit to the left, still. Yeah, that we do, do not get this bump here yeah? in, in the phase reserve. I, w I don't want to get rid of this bump. So a little bit. Higher TN. Ooh, ooh, looks pretty nice. Yeah? We're changing from minus 90 to minus 180 degree. So now it's an IT1 element actually. What is the result? Okay. We are compensating this one time constant of the PT2 element with our controller, and the other one we cannot influence. It's there. And we select the gain that we have here a phase reserve, because if I now would increase this 20, yeah, I will get into trouble because then I'm, I'm reducing the phase reserve, okay? because I'm shifting the sum line up. This means omega d is getting bigger, which actually is good, however the phase reserve is getting smaller. So maybe 10 is not a too bad thing here. So what do we do? What do we do? We want to have here at low frequencies huge values of FO. The reason you know. Because then at least small or, or slow changes will be perfect. We want to have omega d as high as possible here, as high as possible to the right. Yeah. What is limiting here is that the phase reserve down here, where we hit the one line, is it here somewhere, must be around 60 degree, yeah. because then we would end up in an overswing which is not tolerable if it's lower. Actually, that's it. Yeah? What it means is that I do have to dive through the one line with less or more than minus 180. Yeah? So it must be up above 180. Yeah? Not only above 180, because I must also from this, from this band frequency where the band is, yeah, I must be a little bit away, yeah? because you see the real frequency, uh, the real phase is only moving slowly, yeah, and if I'm not far away from this point, yeah? a reasonable, a reasonable thing away from this point, then I'm ending up in low alpha r. So if here is the band, I should be a little bit below the band, yeah? and not just left of it. Basically that's it. This is how we can use the Bode plot to get a reasonable uh, controller setup. Yeah? And these things I adjusted my controller and it should work with this with this uh, system. In reality, I said, the real systems, they are much too complicated for the standard elements. So it's only a starting point. And if you realize in reality, hey, it's not that perfect, then you have to twist this a little bit. Yeah? In many cases, it will feel quite good. Yeah? In some cases, this has to be adopted to the real world. But that's usual, I say. But the starting point, this is perfect. The next videos yeah, we will discuss uh, 
we will discuss some methods on how we can do this, how we can this be achieved. Yeah? Now I just played around, tweak there a little, tweak there a little, looked at the curves, said, yeah, okay, this looks nice. Yeah? We'll get to know two methods. Yeah? How to adjust this? Yeah? Optimized or optimals. Yeah? Symmetrical optimal, for instance, and the absolute value optimal. I will, I will show you what this means. Whew. I hope this thing got is clear now to you that we are shifting only the bands and the positions of our controller and try to compensate our our system a little bit with our controller and reach a high omega d so a high frequency where we pinch the one line durchtrittsfrequenz and we reach at least at low frequencies, huge, huge, huge amplification factors. And phase reserve, 60 degree. That's it. If you got this, you will understand the next things also. For this video, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.